Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Good and Do Good podcast. <laughs> Let's start that over. <laughs> was that too loud? I, uh... No, it's not no, that it was too loud. Cracked. Your voice cracked, like really oh, obviously. Did? Oh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> the 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 it was yeah. The loudness was fine. Just my... Do Good Be Good. <laughs> <laughs> Minimize the energy and right. enthusiasm a little bit. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Be Good and Do Good podcast, a show where we delve into our own unique experiences during our time as missionaries for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. <laughs> I'm your host, John, here alongside my brother and co-host, Jake. Also joining us for this second part of our two-part episode is our sister, Brianna, and they're laughing at me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> we're laughing we're laughing john recorded this just once before and he his voice totally cracked like a prepubescent child <laughs> just uh, the first time he tried recording this so we were trying so hard not to laugh but i couldn't keep a straight face but sorry no nah, it's all good um let me introduce our sister who's here with us uh, Brianna is the mother of two beautiful children and wife to our favorite idaho native tony she has written an article online in the Young Adult YA Weekly for the church called Moms Facing Uncertainty, You Never Walk Alone, an article about moms who face difficulty when they find out their children have developmental delays and trusting in the Savior and his ever-reaching grace and atonement. We will have the link listed in our episode description. She is also an avid book reader, reading over 100 books in 2022. Yeah. Brianna Sturgeon. You asked. Yeah. Brianna served a mission, international mission, in the Argentina Neocan mission for a year and a half. And you can read all about it in her blog, myheartsinargentina.blogspot.com, also linked in our description. Also, Brianna, we welcome you to the podcast once again. How Thank are you, you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Good. I was yeah. just, I was laughing. I mean, I just can't stop laughing during this. I episode, know. This is going to be. Special. I was, yeah, I was thinking as John was reading his bio, I introduced you last week and my bio was like two sentences long. <laughs> I I had not read John's bio and my <laughs> sentence, yeah, my sentence was like, yeah, Brianna, she's our sister. She lives in Idaho. Uh, she's a mom. And I thought and, you had read John's and that yours was like a satire. <laughs> oh no, John. Yeah. Brian, John wrote like all of your like accolades and all of that stuff. Yeah. And I was just like very, very minimal. I'm impressed. So, I genuinely am impressed when I read that. I was like, well, he knows me better than I know myself. I ask like to be Tony, professional. That, ask that Tony of... how many books I read last year. <laughs> he can, he well, on your, right on your Goodreads, it says 99 in 2022. Yes. But I remember you saying you read 100. But, oh, yeah. Wow. But I, I, bet, <laughs> I bet you've read more because you have kids. So. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, you're right. For sure. I love <laughs> books. Shameless plug. Follow me on Goodreads, everybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never heard it. That's a very shameful plug, not because you're plugging yourself, but because it's Goodreads. <laughs> Goodreads is awesome. I I love Goodreads. I've been using it. I just I just uh, finished a book today, actually, and and uh, rated it on Goodreads. I love it, but I just think it's funny to uh, tell people to follow you on Goodreads. I'm kidding. Don't don't look me up. <laughs> don't look it. Um, and also, totally, don't my totally mission damage. blog. My Don't mission really. blog is it's so awesome. cringy. I like reread it and I, I'm like, it well, okay, kind of foreshadowing a little bit. Um, it was so cringy at the beginning. Definitely MTC is like so hard to read, but it's wild how you can see the maturity from like mm -hmm. week one to the end and how yeah. like rich and deep your test my testimony got by the end. It's it's really cool, but yeah, I'm a little Ugh, it's kind of hard to read now. <laughs> I also wanted to say um, last or a couple days ago, I was talking to Brianna and she was talking about her son and he was, she was, she was saying that he watches the show with Brianna sometimes. 
and his favorite parts are little um, musical moments. So right now, I'm going to put a musical moment right here. Da, 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 da. No, <laughs> All right. Now we're back. <laughs> That's for you, bud. I love you. He really, does, he really does love the music part. He runs in to the room every single time because I watched it on TV. And he runs in and he's like... Are you talking about when John spontaneously breaks into song? Or are you talking about like our little yes, intro no. music? He loves the, in, the, what, the instrumental. The, the transitional yeah, music. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, which is well, awesome. A lot of thought and prayer went into that intro music. So I'm very grateful <laughs> that somebody is at least appreciating it. Yeah. Well, I guess time for another inter- transitional music. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Anyways, well, uh, thank you for joining us. If you came, if you watched last week's episode, then you'll know that we've been talking with Brianna about Argentina. Not really, MTC last week. And now we're going to talk about Argentina a little bit with her. But we talked about the missionary, the MTC lore, as well as um, different MTC experiences that a sister missionary has at the MTC. Like, I had no idea that there was a seamstress at the mtc which probably would have been good to know um and we got to watch her mission call opening just just great things so um yeah let's get into this episode unless you guys have something to say no i would love to talk about my mission i could talk about it all day long (laughs) that's why we're here so let's talk about um your getting out of the mtc how was your the plane ride. <laughs> Sorry, you make it sound like she's like breaking out. She like freaking oh, carved a hole like in the gates using like a laser. Like, let's talk about you getting out of the MTC, which like I know a lot of missionaries <laughs> talk about it being almost like a prison, like just Pr- prison breakdown. Leave, but I mean, obviously, we loved the MTC, but it is a little bit confining when you're there. You do almost feel a little bit claustrophobic because your whole world is a block right in Provo um, on the campus. But yeah, let's talk a little bit about when you finally were able to leave the MTC after how many weeks were you in the MTC? If I remember, I think it was six weeks. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you finished your time at the MTC and you're headed to Argentina. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. A lot of it is a blur as far like the, as far as like the logistics go. I remember waking up early, just like I'm sure you guys did like red eye flights because yeah. Why not? But a lot of red eye fly. Yeah, 4 a.m. And you're like frantically weighing your bags the night before and getting rid of all the stuff you can't bring. And, and for me, it was different because I was traveling internationally. So, I mean, it was even more strict. But no, um, all in all, I, I looked on my blog and apparently I had calculated how many hours of travel. Apparently, I traveled for 32 hours. Oh to gosh. get to southern yeah. Argentina. I mean, it makes sense. Our our mission is actually geographically more south than Australia. There's penguins. Wow. Well, it snows down there. Yeah. So it's like they um it's we're the real down under is what we used to say because we were literally <laughs> under the down under. But um yeah, so I flew from Salt Lake City as all missionaries do, I assume. I, I mean, I think everyone does. I mean, if you're Unless leaving you're out of Provo. Salt Lake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. But I flew out of Salt Lake City and um, we flew from Salt Lake to Los Angeles, which is crazy because I grew up in California. So mm-hmm. it was weird. On it was, I remember yeah, feeling, I like weird about that, just like flying into LAX. Mm-hmm. So we flew to LAX and I, I don't even think we got off that flight. I could be remembering this wrong. But then we flew to Atlanta, which a lot of missionaries fly through Atlanta. That was fun. That was really cool. That's cool. And then Atlanta, from Atlanta, we flew to Buenos Aires. That was the longest flight. Mm. Um, you get meals on the plane on the plane, which was really fun. And you pray that you're sitting next to somebody you know. I mean, because that's your first experience out in the real world. You're like, oh my gosh, am I ready to like teach? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I so I remember sitting by one of my good friends friends that was in my district sister missionary and we had a blast but we were exhausted as you can imagine yeah i I believe it was a 13 hour flight from from um and like i said i could be remembering all of this incorrectly but from atlanta to 
Buenos Aires. Buenos Aires, yeah. Yeah. So when we got to Buenos Aires, it so this was in the boom of missionaries. And the crazy part part about my mission was we got 70 missionaries in the same day. So this was this wow. all the visa waiters basically got their visas at the same time. Wow. So they all came with us. And then Dang. I just got out of the MTC. So I was there. So we had visa waiters, MTCers, people who were like fast track MTC that weren't like in our district. They were there. So yeah. we had 70 missionaries. Okay. So all 70 of us. So not all of us were on the same flight, but I just remember landing in Buenos Aires and just seeing hordes of missionaries <laughs> as far as the eye can see. Uh -huh. I mean, and I want to say most of us at that time were American. I think, we, yeah, we were all American. Um, I don't know if all 70 of us were. I don't remember if it was like half and half. But anyways, we were like all American. We all show up in Buenos Aires. Luckily, there were like a few native speakers who like grew up speaking Spanish who can tra who could translate. But they actually kicked us out. We were like we were loitering. They kicked uh -huh. us out of the of the airport. And mm -hmm. I, I wish I had pictures. So I lost all my pictures, oh, but no. um, I know. So um, I did, I do remember taking pictures of just suitcases upon suitcases outside of the Buenos Aires airport and just 70 missionaries standing there, white people, like just standing there, like, what are we doing here? We don't understand. Like, who, are we waiting for anybody? Like mm -hmm. what's happening? And so it was just kind of crazy, but um I remember this guy walking up with a sign that said LDS missionaries. Yeah. He didn't speak English and <laughs> literally walks up with a sign and a double decker bus. I'm not exaggerating, a double decker bus. And he was like, LDS missionaries. And we were like, uh, yeah. And then he was like, <laughs> like basically gesturing for <laughs> us to get on the yeah. bus. Yeah. So we followed him on the bus and then afterwards, all of us were like, why did we just follow this guy that we don't even know? Like, we're like, wait, that was the dumbest thing we've ever done. We don't know him, but it turned out okay. I mean, we he was holding like, the sign, so. <laughs> yeah, you like, can't argue with the you, sign. You, yeah, you can't, like, fabricate a sign super yeah. easily. <laughs> Especially so, an English sign that says yes. ideas missionaries. Yeah. I just, as you're describing this, I just feel bad for, like, the Argentinians, what they must have thought at the airport, oh, just seeing I'm this sure. flock of missionaries just show up and being like, they're invading. <laughs> like, that's they just. They were over it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, that, that was the exciting part, but. I could be wrong about this, but I think it's a five-hour flight from Buenos Aires to Neuquén. Uh, maybe not. I don't remember, but yeah. it was another, it's another little jaunt to Neuquén. So, and I just remember, I remember how it felt to fly in, and there were orchards like all along the <laughs> side of the oh, airport. And I'm like, that's cool. Wow, this is interesting. Like, this is not what I pictured at all. So, that was yeah. that was really cool. But, and you're just like, your adrenaline is there even though you haven't slept in 32 hours so that was my first experience as a missionary in argentina it's it's a culture shock and i i i feel like i have a lot of tidbits that you can take home with you or you can disregard them whatever but if you're planning on serving a mission and if you are called to serve somewhere internationally prepare for culture shock and and know that that's very real and it's okay to feel overwhelmed um i definitely have and i had the privilege of going to South America a few times in my life before I went on my mission. And that a hundred percent helped me a hundred percent. Not everybody has that experience. And I was still overwhelmed showing yeah. up and being yeah. like, this is, this is new. This is crazy. Yeah. I'm like shocked that it took you 32 hours. Like, but I understand because five, five different airports, mm -hmm. I was looking it up and you probably see in the show notes that, that from LAX to to Buenos Aires, it's only fourteen hours straight on. So, oh, wow. so. <laughs> oh man, you got shafted. It could have yeah, taken oh my God. fourteen hours. Well, I guess it would have been fourteen plus five if it's from Buenos. Fourteen Aires. plus five, so so for 19, 19 hours instead of thirty-two hours. That's Almost pretty half. significant. Yeah, that's. But. Uh, that good old tithing money paying for those non-direct flights. I know. <laughs> you gotta love it. Yeah. No, yeah, the church is very thrifty, and that's one of the best things about the church. But, man, yeah, that would have been nice to have it only be 19 hours as opposed to 32 or whatever. Yeah. 
so so long <laughs>So, um, Jake and I haven't gone into our flights and things, um, like how, how shocking it was for us to, to get into our missions and, and like be in a different place and everything. But I imagine it was like, diff- like very different being in a different country, even, um, how like people looked the different, um, culture, things that different to traditions like what were some of the things that you you experienced while you were in on the mission brianna yeah um obviously i think the number one roadblock when you're serving internationally is if if you happen to be serving a different and speaking a different language um yeah. as i'm like struggling to speak english <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's we all we all struggle there right jake <laughs> I mean, your voice cracked before this episode. So. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, here's the thing, like, all I know is this international mission that I served, but, you know, I think you make a valid point that it, you re- you get a culture shock in every mission. You could be serving in Temple Square and you'd still be like, what is happening and where am I and who are these mm-hmm. people? And, you know, um, but the the ability losing the ability to communicate is really humbling definitely mm. um yeah i bet it would be so it, and it is and, and most people are really nice about it but you, not everybody is going to be nice about it and sure. you have to kind of adapt to that and always remember who you are and who you're representing genuinely that sounds kind of like a a kind of a seminary mm. answer but there's a reason it's a seminary answer um uh, we did. I I remember it wasn't me, but I had a companion who received ridicule for the way she spoke Spanish. Oh, and um, that's really tough. I yeah. I, mean, I I received ridicule for the way I spoke Spanish on the mission, and I was serving stateside. So like, I bet even being in a different country, that's yeah. like even worse. You know. Yeah. Exactly. So I think um, that was a huge thing that you have to learn that you have to adapt to. Um, And, um, obviously like culture is going to be different everywhere you go. And specifically in Argentina, the one thing that was wild was they have what they call siesta, which is where everyone goes to sleep or rest really not necessarily sleep, but um, no exaggeration. You can't (laughs) shop between the hours of one and 4 PM. Uh So as a missionary, it's not even just shopping. It's like nothing is open. So wow. you can't go to the movies. I mean, although there weren't really, no, we couldn't go to the movies anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Were you going to the you, movies yeah. on their mission? <laughs> yeah, yeah, apparently. No, but um, I. it's weird. It's like, and, and and as a missionary, I don't even know what the schedule is like now. So Jacob, you'll have to tell me, but um, yeah, like you wake up, you're supposed to study, obviously breakfast exercise clean on Mondays you're supposed to clean and typically that could take a long time an hour hour and a half and for us we didn't have we didn't have public libraries that we could go to or iPads now or whatever would it be like would it be like little internet cafes kind of exactly yep you would have to walk to your nearest cyber is what they call them in Argentina what is it cyber cyber Cyber. yeah oh cyber okay yeah cyber so you would walk to your nearest seabed. You would have to wait for a computer to open up. And in our mission, and this was a rule that was like, it's only on our mission, but um, we couldn't write at the same time as our companions. So we had to wait for our companion to finish writing. Oh, uh, that's ridiculous. And then, yeah. and then we got to write. So that what was what hours. was the mission so, president's reasoning behind that? Yeah, what was the purpose? You don't want to know. It's disobedient missionaries that were okay. doing things that they weren't supposed to be doing, and so oh, like, all okay. right, so man, ruin it for the rest of us. So That's, yeah, yeah so really I would sit there for an hour while my missionary, my missionary, my companion was typing. Yeah, and then it was my turn. So that was two hours wasted. So by the time you're done writing your emails. You, yeah, it's 1 p.m. and nothing's open, so you can't even like go grocery shopping. So, so you have home. like, yeah, well, so you have like three hours. So, what we did was soccer, 
which I kind of have beef against it because I wasn't very good at it. And I was so <laughs> bored of it after like doing it literally every single Monday. But so I, mm. but honestly it, it was fun and I enjoyed it and I did make a goal once and it's ingrained in my memory, <laughs> but, but that's what you do. You go to the capicha, capicha they say in Argentina, cause it's, they have the accent. Oh, Capisha, so, like Capilla. Capisha, yeah. The Capisha. <laughs> so the, chap the chapel. The chapel. In other words. You would go to the chapel and yeah. you would, instead of basketball courts that they have indoors, they have fields outside with gold. Yeah. And you would go play soccer outside with the missionaries, which was fun. But, you know, after after doing it for a year and a half, I was over it. So but that was <laughs> our only option, genuinely. So you kind of learn these. But Argentina is so great. that It's so rich with culture and yeah. And one of the things that it was really amazing for me to experience down there was um, it was experiencing Christmas during the summer. Um, I had never done that before. And it like, I'm not even joking. It's hundred degrees and you're, and it's so hot outside and you're like tracting and it's Christmas. And so people are swimming in the rivers instead of bundling up and and it, you know I, I think initially you kind of try and reject it and you're like this isn't christmas the, you know but i have had some of the best experiences um one of the cool things that we brought myself and a few american missionaries that were in my district uh -huh. um was we um brought christmas caroling to argentina and they had seen oh, it in the movies cool. you know what i mean you, yeah. you see it in the movies and so they thought it was so cute and cool that we would <laughs> come and sing that although it was i'm sure embarrassing for them because that never happens but <laughs> we, we were able to do that and it was so hot outside but those were some really cool experiences but um i mean being on the mission you miss you miss like important holidays and i remember missing thanksgiving because they don't celebrate thanksgiving there obviously and i remember oh, yeah. i remember feeling like extra bummed that day and thinking my family is eating turkey right now and I wish I was there and I'm here and nobody even knows it's Thanksgiving, you know? Yeah. So uh, there's, there's a lot of that too. Just a lot of like, I mean, and you experience that everywhere, but it, it specifically if you travel internationally, you, you know, you miss trick or treating on, on Halloween, but then you get True. these cool new things that. Yeah. Different. Yeah. Different holidays. Like we were there during the world cup which was oh, wow. crazy yeah so <laughs> that and you, you know, the americans a lot of americans don't necessarily who watch. won the who won the world cup while you were there do you remember we're bitter we're still bitter about it <laughs> so we came in second and it was uh, against argentina germany did. yeah it was germany it's the germany argentina in the final and it was penalties ah that's yeah. always the worst way to yeah. go yeah and people were very upset about it and uh, i there were tears i'm not joking there were tears well, so I it believe was it. like <laughs> really it was really sad thankfully fortunately, we redeemed ourselves <laughs> yeah i was gonna say fortunately since then argentina has won so it's takes yeah. a little bit of yeah. the sting out of it but definitely mm -hmm. don't forget about messi never <laughs> messi all the way number yes. 10 yes <laughs> Did, but, did I you mean, like wearing blue and white, Brianna? Oh, I love it. I still love it. And every time I, I, I mean, love wearing blue and white too, even though yes. I never I, no, I have no Argentina affiliation except for my sister that served in, in Argentina <laughs> and some friends uh, of the family, you know, but I love wearing the Argentina uniform. It's, such it's a pretty. It's I like such the a color. beautiful uniform. It the is sun. Really <laughs> the sun is cool to the flag. It's really cool. And I have a, yeah, suns are really important to me. So okay. I, I really do love that. But the, um, the symbol of the sun, the symbol mean? of the sun. Yeah, it's really it meaningful to me. So mm. uh, I didn't. Yeah, that's really cool. But um, I mean, yeah, like just even the vast size of our mission. I mean, it yeah. was it took 12 hours to travel from one end of our mission to the other. Which, like, yeah. if I drove 12 hours from here, I would be, you know, <laughs> in, in a different Canada. place. <laughs> well, I just said being California, honestly, but yeah. that was just my mission. So it's like, and we covered four different provincias, states. Um, I mm -hmm. was, I only served, I'd never even served. So Nelken is actually a provincia and it's also a city. <laughs> I never even served in Nilken the whole time I was on my mission. I oh, served, really? I never served in that state. I served in Rio, ne 
Rio Negro. Yeah, Rio Negro. Okay. The whole time. So all of my areas were in Rio did, Negro. So, Jake, did you serve in Pittsburgh? Because I never served in Des Moines either. Yeah. So. Yeah, I did. I served in Pittsburgh for, I mean, I served in like the Pittsburgh zone for half of my mission. And then oh, for, okay. but I was in the inner city of Pittsburgh itself for six months. Uh, six months, yeah. But yeah. it is like a pretty common thing amongst different different missions to avoid Not sending the system the sister oh, yeah. missionaries to like the inner city just because it can be a little bit more dangerous unfortunately but yeah it's um i definitely spent a good part of my mission in the city which i enjoyed but i definitely preferred being outside so yeah i definitely served in like the moine zone as maybe i don't remember actually never mind don't put me <laughs> on that <laughs> My memory is faulty 15 years ago. I'm talking about age again, right, Chick? Always bring that up now that you know. <laughs> Yeah, time. actually, as we've been sitting here, I just got a text message from Sarah, who we talked about in our in our last podcast, our sister, uh -huh. who is not the only one who's not in this podcast today, but we'll get her in eventually. She texted me and told me, happy four years since you got back from your mission. So it's oh, yeah. been four years to the day. Uh-huh. Since I got at least as of recording, which this will this will release a, a week or two later from when we're talking about this. But yeah, June 21st, four years ago, I got back home from my mission, which is actually crazy. So uh, I thought 15... so too, but I didn't get like the Facebook. I, I thought it was the same day, but I, I didn't get the Facebook um, history or whatever it's called. Memory. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot of memories that come up associated with a day like today but anyways yeah yeah um, Spe speaking of brianna when did you serve because i don't think you told us the the exact dates you said so i served august 28th 2013 to february i don't even know what day Fe february 2015 gotcha yeah cool See? yeah So, Brianna, do you have any takeaways from the mission? Yeah, I I really tried to um, remember kind of the lessons that I learned from my mission, and these can be applied to anybody. Um, so regardless of where you're serving, and even honestly, if you're not serving or planning on serving, um, one thing, and I wish I could attribute this to somebody. I don't remember who told me. I have an idea, but I don't want to get it wrong. Someone told me before I served my mission, um, the scripture, and I, I was going to write down the, maybe you guys know the reference, but yeah. um, the scripture that says men are that they might have joy. Yep. Um, that is 2nd Nephi 2.5. Ah, uh, yeah, two twenty-five. I was going to say two fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's only been four years since I got home from my mission, so I do have that on you. Two twenty-five, yeah. And men are that they might have joy. Yeah, and um, I took that. I tried to apply that. Was I perfect at it? Absolutely not. But I tried to apply that consistently throughout my mission. Um, he reminded me. The person who told me this said. If you're not having fun then you're not doing it right and i just love that because i feel like there's so much pressure sometimes as missionaries and that you need to kind of find joy in every day as hard as that can be sometimes do as best as you can to find the little nuggets of joy and happiness and specifically for me it was like the humor um all of us all of us have the funniest mission stories. Everybody you ask can have them. But I mean, I got bitten over 50 times, which is not, was not funny at the time. But now like thinking about it, like I have pictures of like just my arms covered in bug bites. And I had to get like this, the thickest pink lotion and lather it and i had to go out in public with like pink arms and legs and <laughs> that happened on my mission there was once i mean that i talked about the language barrier there was one time when i was bearing my testimony and i accidentally told an investigator that i felt the spirit on the roof instead <laughs> of in my heart so pecho or like chest pecho is like chest i felt and the spirit techo. and pecho, techo techo is the roof. 
And I remember her looking at me like, what? <laughs> the spirits <laughs> on the roof? <laughs> and I was like, I remember like panicking and being like, what did I say? What did I say? What did I say? So, and yeah. you're going to have lots of that on your mission. But I I was bitten by a dog three times. The same Lost dog? Magic. No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> And he, that's had kind a, of, <laughs> he had a vengeance towards didn't you. get rabies. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't get rabies, but I was bitten by a dog three times. I was tapped by a car. I like to say I was hit by a car, but like I was tapped. <laughs> 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 I was tapped by a car. Um, one of my companions, her favorite thing to bring up, and it's our favorite memory together, is we went to get some... <laughs> We had dropped off our, we had lived on top of a, uh, a meat, a meat, what is it even called? A carniceria? And so our a apartment meat, a was. meat shop. Yeah, like a, a meat butcher? shop. A butcher, yeah. yeah. Like a butcher, a butcher yeah. Shop. And we had dropped our, our stuff off and we're going to go downstairs to get some dinner. And I was like, let me go run to the restroom. And I had tucked my skirt into my garments and I was walking around like that the whole time, the <laughs> whole time. And she still brings that up and it's so it's so funny and that is like sisters be careful because that is a very real problem that we all have to deal with but um i miss plenty of bus stops we i mean you're you have people hitting on you all the time on your mission and we had lots of people hitting on us um comparing us to fried bread <laughs> and the way i mean that is by like i had a very dark complexion companion and i'm very light-skinned and he would kind of talk wryly about how he preferred dark fried bread as opposed to light fried bread. And I was like, <laughs> what are we talking about? It was really weird. This so, guy is brilliant. This, so, yeah, was, <laughs> this he, is flirting at its finest. Oh my gosh. It was wild. So I just encourage everybody, even every day now, RMs, like myself even, I need to remind myself, just find things to laugh about and try yeah. to look for the good and the joyful things did you ever get hit on jake actually yes <laughs> Same now that, here. yeah <laughs> I, now that you I bring it you. up there was there was one time i was, was walking by the side of the road because i feel like you do that all the time as a mission at least stateside mission i don't know how different it is internationally but we just would try to save miles because we had cars yeah. a lot of the times which unfortunately international missionaries don't have quite as frequently and but we would we would walk along the road just trying to save miles and this van like full of just like teenage girls um just <laughs> drove we were walking past the dollar general in uh in pennsylvania where i was at and this van full of teenage girls was just like I, I, ooh, and they were just like cat calling towards me <laughs> and specifically me which i was very proud of because my companion at the time <laughs> was actually a pretty good looking dude but they were like yeah they were interested in me which i wish i could say i was surprised but yeah no i i definitely it definitely I, boosted my ego a little bit i should say oh no i don't know like a couple of my companions got hit on more than me i don't know i was always I yeah I, I didn't I, get I, hit on I that often like a, so this like is why i just didn't remember it's different being a girl for sure no it's very different it is. Yeah. yeah having well it happens way more often and it happens from a bunch of creepy guys yeah it's creepy and a lot of yeah. old people as well like oftentimes i've heard where old men will meet with the sister missionaries purely because they're interested in the sister missionaries oh, which God. is That's good yeah it's creepy Let's so change stay <laughs> safe out there sisters yes, yes. please be um, careful Yes, absolutely. It's it's <laughs> not pray before you leave the apartment every single day. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Do what you can because it all makes a difference. Um Um yeah, I feel like this is a great time for us to get into the preach my gospel nugget. Go ahead, Brianna. Yeah, I <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I missed I missed the boat there. <laughs> Um, so my, what I chose was, can be found in chapter seven. How can I better learn my mission language? I thought since I'm specifically talking about international mission missions, um, this was appropriate. I, that's funny how like you have an idea and then this is kind of where the spirit leads you. Um, president Thomas Swanson taught there's one language that is common to each missionary, the language of the spirit. 
It's not learned from textbooks written by men of, le men of letters, nor is it acquired through reading and memorization. The language of the spirit comes to him who seeks with all his heart to know God and keep his divine commandments. Proficiency in this language permits one to breach barriers, overcome obstacles, and touch the human heart. And I just hope that if you are feeling overwhelmed about going on a mission in a language you don't speak, or if you feel overwhelmed in speaking your native language, I I mentioned this in the, in the past last week when we were talking, I mentioned that I don't feel confident talking. I genuinely don't. I like have no confidence in my speech abilities. And um, I just know that when you're doing the Lord's work, specifically preaching the gospel, that the spirit is the one who's speaking and you don't have to worry about it. And he will like he says, he will touch the human heart, that humanity is good. I, I believe that. And I think people are good. And, and if you're trying your hardest, they will, they will understand you. And I think we all speak that same language, no matter where you go. Yeah, I definitely, I mean, I did not speak a different language on my mission, but I definitely saw that as well. Um, the spirit is absolutely the teacher. We say that time and time and time again, when we're talking about missionary work, uh, it's one of those things that's ingrained in your mind in the MTC, but especially on your mission. Um, but I definitely saw while I was testifying um, that whatever it was that I was saying, whether I was eloquent or whether I was maybe not so eloquent, uh, the people that I was talking to, they understood what I was saying, not because of the words I was saying, but because of the feelings that they felt. And that all has to do with the spirit. So I think it's applicable, not just necessarily if you're struggling to speak a different language, but even if you're struggling to, I guess, convey yourself in your native language, the spirit is always going to be there to, te to bear testimony, I guess, of what it is that you're saying and of the things that you believe. So thanks so much for sharing that, Brianna. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Well, we'd like to leave you with a question um so not well, you brianna but i mean you, <laughs> you can answer as well i did answer it already. yeah you did answer this question Today. we want to leave our viewers this question sorry i cut which, you off John. which is um did you want to serve stateside or internationally and why and also did you serve stateside or internationally <laughs> yes. um and let's pause for uh for a music break for our young nephew Woo! <laughs> All right, Jake, can you close this out? Yes. Once again, Brianna, thank you so much for being a part of this podcast and for answering all of our questions so respectfully. I know we definitely <laughs> uh, may not necessarily be the best at asking inspired questions like it talks about in Preaching My Gospel, <laughs> Rust, but uh, we appreciate you being here. Um, and for the rest of our audience, thank you so much for listening to us today. Um, we talked a lot about being an international missionary. We wanted to make sure that we connected and, and recognized that although both me and John served stateside missions, um, there's a vast portion of our audience or a potential audience that didn't. And so we hope that you enjoyed hearing a little bit about Brianna's perspective today as an international missionary, learning the language, getting adjusted to the culture and whatnot. Um, if you would like to reach out to us, uh, please feel free to do so at begooddogoodpod at gmail.com. Um, but if you feel like you'd rather uh, watch on YouTube, um, just you're more of a visual person, you can find us at youtube.com slash at begooddogoodpod. Um, please rate us on Spotify or YouTube or whatever it is that you're using to listen to this. We'd love to hear from you guys. Also, please share this podcast with anybody and everybody whether they've served a mission or not, we just really want to get this message out there. Um, and without further ado, we thank you and remember to be good and do good. Woo! Awesome. <laughs>